The club knowing that uh, you know our, our first eleven is back on track at least, and, and not only just winning a game, but uh, you know I guess uh, knocking off uh, I guess a bogey side for a very long time. That's just again making the most of now two and two. So to yeah. get three and two again, the confidence the boys will be better for it. T twenty stuff. How's that all going? Yeah, uh, twenty twenty. Um, we played uh, Amiga last Wednesday, and um, even though the bloke hates A and A, Glenn Beckett uh, was very keen for uh, his name to be mentioned. Uh, uh, on the show, so hello to Glenn Beckett. Um, he uh, did the job. Uh, I think he captained the side on uh, on Wednesday and uh, got a win up against us after uh, words have been said with, uh, well, I guess, let's just say some, uh, I guess, uh, feedback in regards to our views on, on how the Long New Shield side's going with the media. They uh, were very keen to. Um, I guess beat A&A last week, and they did just that, so uh, well done to the boys. Um, following on from that, we played Bentley and Ottingham tonight, and uh, yeah, yeah, it'll be interesting, yeah. interesting. so uh, they, they gave us a, a fair spanking uh, last round, so uh, hopefully we can uh, gain a little bit more credit. Are all the ones playing, or is it sort of mix and match, or is it people oh, working? It's a, or we're mix and matching, yeah, I mean, a bit of work has to do with it, but Sue Campbell's uh, put his hand up, and he'll be playing tonight. Yeah, good. He, uh, Jeez, he's good, isn't he? He finally gets a big score, and then, you know, he's yeah, yeah, they, you know, his hand straight up to the oh, at T20. And had uh, Bentley A&A batted second on Saturday, I'm sure Stuart Campbell would have still had his pads on up until about 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, that's 2020. Um, as I uh, mentioned, uh, we're playing Elwood this weekend, so on to Longmere Shield. Um, A&A versus Elwood, we're 2-2, two two. Elwood are 3-1. I guess if you want to spin it in a certain light, A and A are only uh, a win away from uh, second spot. Now that's obviously a little bit fabricated because our percentage is uh, pretty poor. Mm. Um, so yeah, let's just hope that we can get a win on the board. Yeah, and I think it would be good to see um, Elwood because again they've got that Jones and they've got Batty Three making runs, and you know you've got Marshall, you've got um, Nathan, and Zahan um, who uh, took five for against uh, Amiga on the weekend. Yeah, big wraps on him. So. Um, I think it will be a really good game. I think it will be a, a, a competitive game. Last year was very competitive. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, last year we had them 5 for 47, chasing our 200. And um, Dagar and um, Green uh, made an undefeated partnership to uh, get over the line. So, yes, thanks for reminding me. Oh, look, you know, it's, uh, they batted really well. So it was chanceless, to be honest, from memory. I yeah. think only about 10 months ago. The key thing is to try and get through the top, as in any team is to get through those those key players as early as possible. But, um, you know, it will be good, hopefully, you can get a two-day game in because, again, it will be good to get Andy Lee and these guys get good spells under them. And um, hopefully guys like James and, uh, can get a long spell at the, at the crease as well. Absolutely. Now, moving into other games in uh, Long Beach Shield, East Sandringham, uh, they uh, made 7 for 181. Uh, and uh, Hampton Central finished 9 for 129. So a good win for East Sandringham. They're starting to get all their players back. Um, and um, yeah, they're, they're three and one also. So uh, Bennett and Manders making runs. Uh, Mays, Maisie and uh, Hunt uh, taking wickets for uh, Hampton Central. But, uh, and Pat Singh for, uh, taking, yeah. um, for uh, East Sandy taking five for. So he's, he's 10 wickets in two games. He took five for the last game as well. Oh, okay. Well, there you go if that's the case. So uh, look, a uh, good name to bob up when you've, you know, you've, you've got your Bennett's and Jenkins, etc., who have done the job over the years for East Sandy, you know, they'll be wrapped that uh, Pat Singh's really starting to make a I guess system impact. That was going to be the question mark with Hampton, and we talked about it, that you know, coming up against the, the East Sandys and Bentley Nyes, they may struggle, but still, um, it'll be interesting to see how they, how they play it, but you know, you, I still think they'll be able to account for some of those uh, younger teams, but um, I think they're still up there, they're, what, 2-2 two two as well? Yeah, Hampton Central, uh, actually, yeah, two and two with a strong percentage. They're just above us. Mm. Um, Bentley and Iding did the job, but uh, it was actually quite a challenge against Coney South. Coney South, and, and hats off to Coney mm. South. They, they made one sixty four Bentley first against Bentley and Iding against the you know much heralded Bentley and Iding, um, and uh, I think Bentley and Iding only just got over the line with uh, a few balls with an overall so to spare, if that. Um, and Glenn Laylock finally uh, getting a good opportunity to get some time in the middle. Uh, he did the job and won the game, uh, making 83 not out. Um, going back to Carnegie South, Pereira again making runs with 60, Fisher making 50. And um, I think it was an opening partnership of uh, over 100 runs. Um, and then um, Glenn Mailer decided to have a bowl. Well, yeah, he's, he, he was a bowler originally, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, that's right. And um, he had a back issue or whatever, and he, and he gave it a test and took three for eight. <laughs> 
Uh, Russell again doing his job, uh, you know, providing that balance in the United bowling attack with his orthodox two for 33, and of course uh, Big Chubbs uh, taking two for as well. I think the, the good thing from here, or the key things to look at here, is is A Carnegie South, you know, can match it with the top teams. Yes, yeah. they're going to get a lot of confidence. Obviously, they're going to get the six points, but they're going to get a lot of confidence out of the game. But just looking at Bentley Uniting, um, you know, Tom Backman back in, back, yeah. made 40 runs. Um, and, and to go with, the, I think, uh, nearly 200 runs or whatnot that he's uh, batted in the twos this year. And he'll be better for playing those games. Mm. So um, to have him back at the top of the order, it's just they're, they're just looking better and better. Um, Russell's missed out a few times, but again, he's taking wickets with the ball, so he, mm. you know, he's, he's uh, doing really well there. But um, Well, he didn't bat last game either, so... I think that's the big positive out of this result. They had a good challenge. Mm. They had their big players uh, get involved and, and uh, have a say in the game. And um, yeah, and they've walked away with the points. I guess the, the question is, uh, who, who do you drop out with with, uh, with all this depth at Bentley United? And Brent Ernst, who was a heralded return back to Bentley United, he's struggling with the bat. Yeah, but who do you drop it? Who do you bring in? Who... Yeah, well, I mean, uh, 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 Brisbane, who uh, had his opportunity last week, was the only wicket to fall against uh, A&A. Um, and then straight back down. So you put in a hit on Ernst, eh? Well, I'm just saying, uh, a few people will be wondering what Brett's doing, and I'm sure that, you know, if he is watching this, he'll be the first to respond by making the score on Saturday. So uh, that's what uh, mm. that's what United are hoping for anyway. Yeah. Kingston Heath, uh, unfortunately, lost again, um, this time to LePage Park, who are, again, sitting pretty at 3-1. and one. Um, and they only lost to Cunningham South in a tight game, so that could have been 4-zip also. Uh, Squeak McConkey, uh, 43, not out. Uh, chasing Kingston Heats 105, and he also took three for 19. Uh, he is one of the premier uh, all rounders in the competition. Oh, sure. but they're, they're the two top sure. players, you would imagine, and, uh, who have done it consistently over the last few years. Bruder again taking two for against Kingston Heath, and Timmy O'Meara making 28 for the page as well. So, again, the page yeah. 3 and 1. Yeah, and they're doing well. I'm not too sure, I can't remember who they've played. I think they've played some sort of lower. Well, lower. they play Cunningham kind of South, which is the game that they lost. Maybe make anyway. So yeah, no, they're doing really well. But um, yeah, Kingston Heath. What are they seeing? They're probably only one to one. Well, yeah. No, they haven't even won one. I mean, one. I oh, have won one. Big part. So yeah. Um, but yeah, they're, they're they're winning those games. You know, that's all they can do. So um, yeah, again, little page. We'll be interested to see how they go against Day and Eight. I think you've probably got them after Christmas. So. So I think that's incorrect. I don't think Kingston Heath have won yet. Well, they've got played five. Yeah, yeah. that's that's the scenario there on the on the card. But anyway. They're, they're, yeah, they're, I mean, whatever. Anyway, we'll move on to the next game, Omega. Um, they played Elwood, 9 for 136, and uh, Elwood passed them, I think, four wickets down. Um, so, uh, again, DeHaan took five for against yeah. Omega. Um, I remember we, we spoke to the Omega guys uh, after the 2020 game, and they, they, they were a little bit complacent about DeHaan, and uh, I guess a lot of people have, because DeHaan was playing twos for the first half of last season. He's come, come in leaps and bounds, and everyone's mm-hmm. talking about him. Um, so, probably uh, poor judgment from Amiga. It's, it doesn't surprise me, but um, Elwood are just getting it done. And they've done it for the last few years, they, they have a really good start to the season. Um, you know, but now sitting 3-1, um, you know, they're, they're sitting in a very good position. But um, I'm not too sure, did Marshall make runs? I haven't seen any scores. Oh, no, but... the scores aren't up. But, uh, no. Nathan mentioned that they passed and pulled down, so... Yeah. But, yeah. um, no, it's, um, well, it just all it means is that Amiga's sitting, what? Zero and four. Zero and four. And they've got uh, the loss of uh, Chris Clement, who's uh, moved to Perth. So they lose that. I think they're losing a, a couple of other um, quality players this round also. So the depth is definitely uh, being tested at the moment. Um, uh, I think, I don't know whether Ferguson's back playing. Um, but he's, he's, he's got a, I think, a, a serious, I think, back problem at the moment. So I saw, um, I saw Horry got dropped to the two, so maybe he'll come in. Yeah, look, there's a few out, so I'm sure he'll be the game. Anyway, so uh, yeah, look, Amiga, um, they're doing it tough, but you know, they're a strong club. We're sure they'll bounce back. Mackie, as we mentioned, you know, you know, the final game that we haven't spoken about is uh, Union and West Bentley, and West Bentley all out for 85, and they're relying on Morgs to make the runs. He top scored with 28. 27 for, for Chopper Reed, not out. Um, Stuart Bell taking four for and uh, big Rossi Beach, three for 11. We spoke.